This video is about measures of variability, including the range, interquartile range, variance, and standard deviation. So, so far we've talked about frequency distributions, which represent um, sets of data, and we've talked about measures of central tendency, um, which characterize the central point of a set of data. So here's a normal distribution. We've looked at other uh, skewed distributions, but right now we're just going to talk about a normal distribution. And so from looking at a normal distribution, we know where the um, central tendency of that distribution is, which is in the center of the distribution. So all three measures of central tendency, the mean, the mode, and the median, are at the center of a normal distribution. So there's another characteristic of um, the distribution and of a set of data that's very important as well, and that is the um, variation or dispersion of the data. So for example, this is um, another, it's supposed to be a normal distribution, and um, this distribution may have exactly the same mean, mode, and median as this one, but it looks very different in shape. So What's different is that the um, observations are dispersed across a wider range of values. So this, um, this distribution, it looks more squished than this distribution, and that's because um, the variability is higher in this distribution than it is in this distribution. So here's an example of two different um, data sets. And these data sets have the same mean and the same median. So the, the central tendency of these two sets of data is exactly the same. However, if you look at the numbers that make up the sets of data, you see that they're very different. So sample 1 um, has a lot more values, different values, than does sample 2. So there are, um, so the mean and the median are in some sense less representative in this sample than they are in this sample because here there are far fewer numbers and all of the observations are much closer to the, the central tendency in this sample than they are in this sample. And this shows what the distributions um, might look like for each of these uh, samples. So you can see again in each case uh, the mean and the median are 5, which is the value at the center of the distribution. But in this one, the data, um, the spread is much wider around the, the central tendency in this one, meaning the variation is higher than it is in this one. So you can um, look at the distributions, and based on their shape, you can t get a sense of the variation in the sample. So now we're going to talk about uh, different measures of this variation. So here's a data set that we're going to use to talk about the different measures of variability. So this data set um, has a hundred values and um, there's scores on each of these values. So you can think of this as a possibly um, scores on a quiz. Okay, so then um, each score is uh, ranked, all the scores are ranked in order. Okay, so this is the first score, meaning the lowest, all the way to the hundredth, which is the highest score. So the first measure of variability that we're going to talk about is very simple. It's the range. So it's simply the um, distance between the first and the last score, which equals 85, which is the last score, minus 35, the first score, which equals 50. So the range is simply the, um, literally, the range of values over which uh, the data set um, ranges. So the next type of measure of variability is called the interquartile range. And um, the interquartile range refers to the middle 50% of the data. So uh, to calculate this, we want to calculate the different quartiles. So we have the, 20, the, the first quartile, which is the first 25% of the data, the first quarter of the data. And so um, 
it's helpful here that we have the data ordered. And so the 25th percentile will be um, between directly between the 25th and the 26th observation. So um, to get that, we simply take the um, 25th and the 26th observations and then we we calculate the middle point between those two observations. In this case it's easy uh, because they're the same number but you would just take 45 plus 45 divided by 2 90 divided which equals 90 divided by 2 which equals 45. So we're gonna do that um, also for the um, 75th percentile so again we want to calculate the midpoint between the 75th and 76th observation because we want to get the number above which 25% of the data lie. So again um, if the numbers were different we would take 71 plus 71 um, and then divide by 2 to get the middle point between those numbers. Uh, we know that it's 71. So we have the 25th percentile, uh, which is 45, and the 75th percentile, which is 71. And so the interquartile range is the difference between those numbers, which is 71 minus 45 equals 26. And uh, often you'll see the interquartile range um, listed like this where it's just two numbers um, the 25th percentile and the 75th percentile so <clears throat> we will just for fun let's calculate the um, 50th percentile because those numbers are actually different and so remember that the 50th percentile is also the median so to calculate that we want to get the number between the 50th and 51st observation um, and so that's easy. So that is just 58 plus 59 divided by 2, which is 58.5. So the 50th percentile, or the median, is 58.5. So the goal of the measure of variability is to um, illustrate how similar the data overall are to the measure of central tendency. So um, this frequency distribution or histogram shows the score data that was um, that we were just looking at, the 100 scores, and this is a frequency distribution of, um, of that data. So the mean in this data set is 58.75. So there's the range, I mean the mean, and now we saw that um, the range is just the full expanse of the data. So in this case the range goes from 35 to 85. So that shows that um, the observations span a width of 50. And the interquartile range is 26 or um, it goes from 45 to about to 71. Okay, so those are two different measures of um, the variability of this set of data, but as you can see, um, there's a lot of information that is still not captured by those two measures of variation. And so um, one of the things that we might want to know is what is the deviation of each of the scores from the mean. So essentially that's what, what we're most interested in. How much do the scores in the data set vary from the mean? So the most straightforward thing might be to simply measure the deviation of each of the scores from the mean. So um, for example, these are the first um, six scores, the lowest six scores, so we're just going to subtract the mean from each of those to calculate the deviation of each of those scores from the mean. So for example, 
uh, here's the mean. We, we subtract the mean from the lowest score, getting this deviation of negative 23.75. Uh, we can do the same thing for all of these scores, getting um, deviations from each of those scores. So here we just see um, subtracting the mean from each of these scores gives us uh, these deviations from the mean. And um, what happens is that all the numbers below the mean will have deviations that are negative, and all the numbers above the mean will have deviations that are positive. So um, with a, about an equal number of um, negative deviations and an equal number of positive deviations, adding them up, would they would just cancel one another out. So um, we would want to take the absolute deviation, so ignoring the sign. So what we can do is um, just add up all the absolute deviations from the mean across all the um, hundred students with the hundred scores and then just divide by the total number of students or scores. Um, and that will get us the mean absolute deviation from the mean of all the scores. So that number turns out to be 12.81. So adding up all the absolute deviations, these numbers, the absolute value of these numbers across all 100 scores equals 1281. And then we're just dividing that by the total number of scores to get the mean absolute deviation from the mean. And so this, this measure is um, be, I'm using to just illustrate the basic idea of, of what the um, variance and standard deviation are calculating, and that the difference between the standard deviation and variance, which I'm going to show you in a moment how to calculate them, uh, and the range and interquartile range, is that the variance and standard deviation capture um, the variation of every single score from the mean. But, for statistical reasons, the variance is, ca is calculated somewhat differently than what we just um, described, but conceptually it's the same thing. So the variance um, is pretty, pretty similar to what we just did with the absolute deviation. The only difference is that whereas before we canceled out the negative numbers by simply taking the absolute value, to calculate the variance, what you do is you square the deviations. So you simply take the, the score, subtract the mean, and then the deviation from the mean is squared. Okay, And then you add up all of those squared deviations and then divide by the total number of scores, and that's what the variance is. So here, illustrated with the two lowest scores, um, we simply square the deviation from the mean, which is that number, 564.06, and again, square the next deviation from the mean, which is 473.06, and then we do that for all 100 means, so we get 100 squared deviations from the mean, I mean, sorry, for all 100 scores, so we get 100 squared deviations from the mean, one deviation, one squared deviation for each score in the data set. We add all of those up across the hundred scores and then we get a sum. So here is the sum of the squared deviations from the mean and then to get the variance we simply divide that sum by the total number of scores. And so the total, uh, the variance for this sample of 100 scores equals this, 211.89. And so obviously this number has the characteristic that if the scores are more spread out, more distant from the mean, then this number, the variance, will be higher. If the scores are less spread out, that is, they're closer to the mean, then this number will be lower. So there are two things to notice about the variance. One is the fact that it um, takes into account every score means that the 
outliers in a data set. So if the data set is skewed, meaning that it has a lot of outliers, then the variance will also um, weight more heavily those outliers because the deviation from the mean from, of those outliers will be much bigger. So one reason to use the range and the interquartile range is you use those when your data set is skewed because the variance will um, be affected by those outliers. The other thing about the variance that's important is that this number, because the number is squared, this the the variance ends up being not not being in a unit that is similar to the scores that you're looking at. So remembering that our data, the scores range from 35 to 85, um, and our variance now is 211. So it's hard to really have an intuitive sense of the spread of the scores because this the variance is so high. And so that's where the standard deviation comes in. So the standard deviation is simply the square root of the variance. And the reason to use the standard deviation is, like I said, it's in the same units as the um, data that you're working with. So the variance is um, statistically accurate and it's also useful in a lot of statistical modeling and so that's why it's very important but to um, to work with something that's in the same units as your data you want to square take the square root of the variance which is the standard deviation. So in this case the standard deviation of our 100 scores equals the square root of the variance to 11.89 which equals 14.56 and so now you can see that um, this number is a little bit different from the absolute um, deviation of 12 something that we calculated before but um, it's still in the same units as the scores themselves as opposed to being dramatically uh, out of the range of the scores and so um, so that's how you calculate the standard deviation, and hopefully this has helped you get an intuitive grasp of what those numbers mean. Thanks a lot.